ask you first, if you, what is the headline that readers will take away from this article? Well, one of the basic points is that no matter what we say about diplomacy, the act we've, you know, carrot and stick, the stick's working pretty hard. The stick's working over time. This president uh, did escalate uh, the covert war, the secret war inside Iran. We've been doing stuff inside Iran since uh, 05 pretty much, pretty heavily. You know, uh, looking at the nuclear facilities, collecting intelligence, uh, trying to undermine the regime, et cetera, et cetera. But there was a significant escalation this year. We, first of all, he got a great deal of authorization to spend up to $400 million. It doesn't mean he spent it all yet, but he's got that kind of authorization from one of the secret committees. If anybody saw Charlie Wilson's war, you know, he, Charlie Wilson was able to generate a lot of money secretly. That's what happens in Congress. And the other major thing is that we've sent in a special task force that operates out of Afghanistan into uh, Iran. I did notice what Ambassador Crocker said about not cross-border, and, and I have a lot of respect for him, and, and uh, I don't want to challenge him, but the fact is we're inside. We're not necessarily cross-border. We have teams inside uh, Iran, and these include a uh, joint special operation force, uh, most elite commando unit, and basically they're, they're guys who go after high-value targets around the world. You know, they, they capture them or kill them, so it's a significant increase in, in American potential for, for um, a damage inside Iran. I do want to let our audience hear from Ambassador Crocker, and then I want to ask you the difference between what he's denying and wh what you're saying. Here he is. I haven't read the article, uh, Candy, but uh, I can uh, tell you flatly that uh, uh, U.S. forces are not operating uh, across the uh, Iraqi border into Iran uh, in the south or anywhere else. So... They're not, I mean, is, is he denying something you didn't say? I can't quite get well, the difference here. you know, it's, it's complicated because um, uh, one of the things in the article, it's a long article in The New Yorker, one of the things I describe is that one of the problems in uh, uh, the uh, uh, Admiral Fallon, the former commander of CENTCOM, who was, you know, ran into trouble because he spoke about not wanting to bomb Iran, another factor in, in Fallon's problems with the White House, particularly with Mr. Cheney, the vice president, was that Fallon wasn't able to learn what was going on, all he wanted to know, about a, a covert operations, CIA operations inside Iran and Afghanistan. That is simply a reality, that when you run secret operations, if you're not telling the commander, the military commander of the central command who's supposedly running the country, you may not tell the ambassador everything. It's sometimes it's better not to have the ambassador know. But the other point is, we certainly are going cross-border on, on short forays, grabbing al Quds members, bringing them back. For, we've been doing that for a long time. He may not know the extent to which we're operating deeply with commandos, are, are, are not so much uh, with our special forces inside Iran. So it's possible because uh, he's, he's not somebody, he, he'll spin it, but he's not somebody who won't say something he doesn't believe. So what's the end game here? What are they trying to accomplish? Is it to end the war in Iraq? Is it to overturn the government in Iran? Is it greasing the skids for a, a preemptive strike? What are they doing there? Yeah, that's a great question because um, uh, I don't know. And boy, do I wish. I've been writing about Iran for about three, three years almost constantly in the New Yorker. Sort of, you know, uh, the sky, chicken little, the sky is falling. And um, I, I sure wish I, I could be wrong about it. The end game is that as far as, and I do have some access into some of the thinking, particularly in the vice president's office, they do not want, the Bush and Cheney do not want to leave Iran in place uh, with a nuclear program, but they believe a nuclear weapons program. They simply don't believe the national intelligence estimate that came out late last year that said they haven't done anything in military weapons, uh, nuclear weapons since 03. They just don't believe it. Um, so they believe that um, um, uh, their mission is, is to make sure that before they get out of office next year, either Iran is attacked or it stops its weapon program, weapons program. I do believe that. I think this is another example of putting an awful lot of pressure on the Iranian government, there's been a, a dramatic increase in, in kinetic events and chaotic chaos inside Iran. Almost every other day, there's another story in the Iranian press. I write about this in the article too, about uh, blowing things blowing up, et cetera, et cetera. It looks like things are falling apart a little bit, and the central government certainly has more trouble. And I think the goal of the of this operation, this incredible operation with all this money, and by the way. It's the Democrats in Congress who basically looked the other way and said, take the money and run. They did not stop this money. The leadership that I'm talking about, the, 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 uh, the Democratic leadership. So basically, I, I, uh, my guess is that um, uh, uh, I don't think we can safely say that any military action is off the table no matter what happens. And, and, I, and that's, 
as I say, I wish I, w I wish I'm going to be wrong about all that. But this is really sort of an amazing development. A absolutely. I, I want to read a, a graph out of your book because it goes to the oversight sure. for the Democrats you just mentioned. This is from your book, uh, your uh, sorry, from your article. The oversight process has not kept pace. It's been co-opted by the administration. The person familiar with the contents of the findings said, the process is broken and this is dangerous stuff we're authorizing. Tell me first what your sources say is so dangerous about this. The president has to give a finding on covert action, any action that's covert. In other words, when CIA goes in someplace, if we, they get caught, there could be spies. So he has to tell the Congress about it. And the, the military simply is the president since 9-11 has decided that anything we do militarily, we don't have to tell anybody in Congress about. We're, that's all preparing the battlefield. That's the title of the piece. And so um, what Congress gets told is uh, something about CA operations, and that's why they had a finding, but nothing about what the military is doing on the ground inside Iran. And so the, the, the people in the Senate, the House, particularly uh, the Defense Appropriations Subcommittee, Charlie Wilson's old subcommittee, we're talking about Congressman Obi, Congressman Murtha, some of the others, are really concerned because they're approving programs about which they don't have the whole story and they know it and they don't know what to do about it and it's a source of enormous tension the problem is it's also secret nobody wants to talk about it nobody can talk about it it's a world that the white house controls because it's very top secret a presidential finding that i'm writing about is a document you don't discuss on cnn uh, if you're the ambassador you don't talk about it um, i understand uh, um, um, uh, senator mcconnell was here and he's he, there the senators are able to say those who know can say i can't talk about it so we in the public don't get much of a look. And for me as a journalist to write about this um, is difficult because often a lot of other journalists won't be able to make heads or tail of what I'm doing because they can't simply find the people that will talk about right. it. Right, absolutely. I've got about 15 seconds. Can you give me in a nutshell why it's so dangerous? Is it because it could prompt a war with Iran if they were to find uh, these special ops people? We have special operations people, and they're great people. They're very loyal soldiers. They do what they're told, going around killing people around the world without ambassadors knowing it, without the CIA station chiefs knowing it, without Congress knowing it. If that doesn't sound like, you know, with this president, if that doesn't make people nervous, uh, I don't know what else you what, what would, I can just tell you. Seymour Hirsch, another blockbuster story, New Yorker. Thank you so much. You all ought to go out and get a copy. We will be right back.